Richard, I don't want to be obsessed with race, but uh, this is a different angle I've really never heard anybody discuss. Uh, can white writers write for you? You know what I mean? If they write for the human being in me, yes. If they write, right. if they try to write for some idea they have of what I would be as a black person, they usually cannot do that. Can, can you tell when you get a page of dialogue that they, they have a tin ear for what you sound like? Uh, yeah, I think they, if they just write, if I get a script uh, just of a person, mm -hmm. I can understand it a lot better than someone saying, and it's black, and mm -hmm. he has all this, and you read it, it makes you sick. You know, when they write like that, uh, and I, I would prefer they didn't for me. Yeah. What would be a case of somebody trying to sound black? Could you give an example? You know, they... like, uh, I mean, I know, I know they don't mean any harm, but they don't realize how ignorant it is when mm -hmm. they're trying to have that black voice that... Uh, some whites try to do yeah. that really don't do well. Like why you jive turkey? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Why, just... <laughs> why don't you get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Because yeah. they never really, it, it, I'm sure it's true of other, there are people like myself who do know what they're saying and could do it, I think is right. I honestly think I could. <laughs> Do what? What are you talking about? I think about? I could write for you in your vernacular because of... But what is my vernacular? Well, because I hang out with... Yeah, but what is my vernacular? What, what are you talking about? Well, like this hug is all in my yoke. Right, Dick. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, you know, what, what is it? What is it that... What do you think I am? What do I talk like? Something? I, no, I, I simply know this, that when I... Um, Explain I yourself. know that when... Uh, <laughs> Now, you know as well as I do that if you're with a group of friends you grew up with or something and a couple of Ofe cats come about and, talk, and you want to talk so they don't understand, you can, even as perhaps mm, people from uh, the Caribbean will suddenly go into a... Like, have you ever been, have you ever been in the Caribbean where... Uh, where, I'm just going to move back a little no, bit, Richard. No, I'm, I'm just no. trying to understand. I don't here's understand exactly, you. Here's exactly what I mean. In the Caribbean, there's a dialect that is English. It sounds like it's not. Pigeon English. Yeah, so a man, but it, they're actually saying, if you saw a transcript, the man at the desk will say to you, uh, good evening, Mr. Cabot. We think we have your room ready in just a minute. How did they get And they the other side up. Yeah, did they, man? And what he, yeah, what he was saying is, why don't you take that luggage over on the other side there? Why don't you take that luggage over on the other side there? Yeah. But he didn't quite want me to know that he was correcting someone or something. Mm -hmm. So, how the hell did I get into this? <laughs> Now, there's a lot of funny stuff in this book. <laughs> no, I, I'm trying to, I don't understand. But what part don't you understand? None of it. <laughs> no. my, be my beginning question was, I thought, a simple, harmless one, which was, do you have the problem of a writer trying to write what he thinks is what? The way a black guy would talk. Do I have a problem with when, it? When somebody hands you a script for something. No. No. Well, then why did you say that's a problem in the interview I read, in which now you can't just hang my ass out here like this. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> okay. I, I, when, when was that interview? Ah, uh, might have been several years old. Then they don't apply right now. Because the new prior is with us. It's not a new prior, it's just I'm different about my feelings about people and about yeah. how I feel about them, how they, how they feel about me. Is that a gradual thing, or was it kind of an overnight change from after you survived the horror of your... No, accident? I just think it's, uh, for me, it's the way I want to be as a grown-up person. That's, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> and I do the best I can, man. Are, are you ever approached a lot to, say, do public service <laughs> announcements and... Uh, public service announcements? Oh, you know, like, Richard, you, would you talk to kids, look into that camera and say, yeah, joke is yeah, bad? Yeah, I, I, I've been approached and... But I don't know that that helps. I mean, I it's, unfortunately, people have to do what they would like to do. You can only show, you can show them better than you can tell them. Mm -hmm. How you live is how they live. If 
usually if you don't have drink around and you're not alcoholic and you're not you know borderline alcoholic yourself mm -hmm. they tend not to have that problem but if every time you have a problem you take a pill or take some drink they, they, they find it alright to do. Are you technically a recovered alcoholic? Technically? Or in, in I fact? Just, I just say that I, a day at a time I, I, I try not to drink mm -hmm. and so far it'll be three years God's been with me. Now how do you account for <laughs> Anyone opposed to that? <laughs> <laughs> How do I do that? How do you account for the fact that um, Murphy has never had any such problem? I don't know him that well. Is it, so I, don't, I wouldn't account for anything about him. Is it different, though, in that you, if you were coming up now... Yes, if I was coming up now. Supposedly, a, it'd be, is it an easier climate for a young comic to come up now than, say, for Eddie, from what you came through? I, I, was, I came through a lot. Yeah, you uh, did. The you period did. that I came through it was a lot in you that period. You paid your dues and several other people. Yeah, there was a lot. And he doesn't have to do that because I did it. And there was no one ahead of you to do it for you. That you well, for see. me, I mean, Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory. That's Dick first, Gregory made right. it possible for me. Yeah. And someone made it possible for Dick Gregory. You know, and we just pass it on. Keep passing the torch. Yeah. Um, the name of your film. Yeah. Jojo. Dancer. Jojo, comma. Dancer, your life is calling. Yeah. And it's, I think I was right when I said it's more biographical maybe than anything you've done before. Yes, I would say that. I would say also that people coming to see this, it's not uh, a Richard Pryor movie like Stir Crazy or something like this. It's a thinking movie. I believe that you have to stretch yourself in this. Mm -hmm. I don't think everyone will like it, but I think that I made a good film. Uh, if you like films, uh, if you like a story that's complicated and deals with a lot of stuff, there are some laughs in it, but it's really a drama about behind the laughter. And um, it would be very close to, I think I read, I read something you said about it, that it's a, a guy who at the peak of his career has no self-esteem or something. Am I overstating it? Or yes, you are overstating it. Or ruining but, it for no, you. you're not ruining it for me, but it's just that it's a different kind of movie for me. I've never done anything like this. And I, I don't know. I hope that I pulled it off. Did wise heads say you're making a terrible mistake? Keep them laughing. And... No, no. Well, that's good. No. Yeah. Hey, I'm very happy to have you here. It's good to see you again, yeah. man. During the break, I'll try to make clear that thing I was talking about earlier. <laughs> okay. We have a message. We'll be right back. <laughs>